Uh, I won't say much about this. It is self-explanatory. You can see this one is a grain of a monocotyledonous plant, and it was it began germinating. So you can see that actually uh, we see a single cotyledon coming out. Even here, it is still one. Uh, and I want you to note that in germination, always the radical or the part which will form the roots always comes out first before the the plumule or the part which will form the shoot. So as we see here, we still have one cotyledon, so that's why they are called monocotyledonous. But as time moves on, we see that now actually we begin to form the many cotyledons. So actually at this time they are no longer called cotyledons, they are actually now called leaves. Uh, now we see that uh, this is what I was trying to tell you. These small white lines, the ones that you are seeing, leave alone this big one, this is a midrib. But these small white lines are the ones that we call veins. As you can see, they are moving close to each other, but they are not crossing each other. They remain separate, so we call that one being parallel. Are you seeing how you can see that they are parallel? This is what we call a parallel venation. Another thing, you can see that this leaf, if you got a ruler and measured from here up to here, and you also measured from here up to here, you would actually see that it, the length, this one, is far greater than the width. So for that reason, we describe the, them as being narrow. Ah, now we move away from uh, monocotyledonous plants and we move to the dicotyledonous plants. Uh, as you can see, this is a bean seed and it is germinating. Uh, are you seeing these two guys? These two small leaves are the ones that we call cotyledons. And they are two and they are equal. So that means they were two even from the very beginning. So the plants containing two cotyledons in their embryo are termed as dicotyledonous. I shouldn't forget that the word mono means one and the word die means two. So characteristics of monocotyledonous, I mean dicotyledonous plants. The first characteristic that you should never forget is that they have two cotyledons in their embryo. They have a taproot system. Uh, a taproot system is a type of root system whereby we have a main root which develops from the radical. Hope you know what a radical is. That part of the seed of the embryo which becomes the root. So there is a main root from the radical. Then this main root begins to give out smaller side branches which we call lateral branches. In science the word lateral means the side. So they generally have broad leaves. What does that mean to have broad leaves? That means the length of these leaves is not so much greater than the width. Actually, some plants, some of some leaves of some plants, you find that they are more wide compared to to their length. They have a network of venation in their leaves. So the other time in monocotyledonous plants, we saw that they have parallel venation, and we saw what parallel venation means. So this time round, uh, in the in the dicotyledonous plants, we see a network venation. Network means uh, connection. If you say that. Uh, uh, for example, if you actually if you talk about connection, then you are talking about network. So if you are not connected, then you have no network. So the veins of these uh, of the leaves of these plants, they are actually connected. So they are in some form of a network. So they undergo secondary growth. I told you secondary growth means to grow or to increase in the diameter of the stem. So these plants undergo secondary growth that means their, their stem is capable of enlarging and the, something which is attached to secondary growth or increase in the size of the, the in the diameter of the stem is formation of wood so you find that most of the dicotyledonous plants actually are the source of what wood so if you look at uh, 
if you look at uh, a mango tree if you plant a mango tree today after 20 years you find that it, it is actually bigger than you in diameter uh, but if you plant a maize seed today you find that after six months it will be as big as uh, just if if you have a very small hand it will just be big as big as your hand but and it will never it will not exceed there instead it will just die so they have a cambium and it, this cambium is the one which is responsible for the secondary growth the vascular bundle is arranged into a ring very good so we saw in the monocotyledonous plants that for them the vascular bundles are just scattered in the stem but these ones they are actually arranged into some form of a ring you will see that one as we move around along so floral parts are in fours or fives and multiples of four or five so you either find for example you find either the petals are four or the sepal or the petals are five or if not you find that they are actually eight or ten the leaf of a dicotyledonous plant uh, you can see this is a midrib uh, this midrib gives out veins these are the veins but you can see now this vein is connected to this one this one is connected to this one even some of them come back and connect to the main midrib so this kind of network is the one that actually distinguishes most dicotyledonous plants because the word is dicotyledonous but you most of you you find most of the plants when you find them when they are already mature plants and you, you don't have a chance to sit there uh you, the other at uh, them at the other point where they are still germinating for you to see the cotyledons so if you find the mature plant you'll not be able to see the cotyledons but one thing that can tell you that actually this is a dicotyledonous plant is when you see this kind of venation in their leaves so i want to give you a challenge a banana plant i want you to go and look at its leaf and tell me is it a dicotyledonous plant or a monocotyledonous uh, so i told you we are dealing with a group known as spermatophyta but the spermatophyta it has uh, what we call the gymnosperms and angiosperms and we saw that angiosperms are the flowering plants so we want to go into the details of flowering plants because they are actually of great importance to us so these are plants that belong to phylum angiospermatophyta i told you what angios means and what spermatophyta means and a flowering plant has basically two systems they're not so much complicated they have a shoot and a root system the shoot system consists of the stem leaves flowers and fruits and it develops from the primule of the embryo i told you if we we shall see this one later but even from your primary science you remember that a seed actually the embryo has two parts one is a primule and the primule will give rise to the stem to the leaves to the shoot in general and then we have what we call a radical a radical is the one that gives rise to the roots hope that one is clear so a flowering plant basically has a shoot and a root system we are going to begin with the root system because for it it is a bit easier and simpler and then we shall end with the shoot system the shoot system consists of stem leaves flowers and fruits and we are going to look at each of them in turn so the general structure of a flowering plant this one is not a real plant but it shows you a general structure uh, basically it could not be a complete flowering plant if there was no flower on it so this is a flower and it is the reproductive part if you can see very well this flower actually we have one two three four five petals what does that mean this that means this plant was actually is representing uh, dicotyledonous plants 
but that one doesn't mean but most of the parts which are there apart from these specific things you find that even monocotyledonous plants have them for example having flowers even monocotyledonous plants have flowers uh, we have what we call a bud this bud is something is uh, a structure which develops in the angle between the leaf and this main stem so this bud may actually give rise to a flower like just as you are seeing here or it may give rise to a branch just as you are seeing down here so in other words these are sometimes they are actually called axillary buds axillary means something which is not the main thing which is not the main bud so it's something axillary, something which is not main. So since they are on the sides, so we call them axillary buds. So this is a leaf. Uh, this is the shoot system. The green, the green, the green section represents the shoot system. Uh, they are green because they should be able to photosynthesize. Then here the brown system uh, represents the root. So we are going to begin with the root system, as I had told you already. Uh, a root system is the best. A root, a root is the best part of a plant, which attaches it to the ground or to a support. You remember, uh, as we are going to see, not every root is found in the soil. Some of them are even found in the buildings. Others on fellow plants. So either it is in the ground that means the soil or to any other support typically underground conveying water and nourishment to the rest of the plant via numerous branches and fibers so here most of the of these supports are found underground but some of them may not be underground so a root system refers to the total collection of all roots and their arrangement in a plant so here we are defining a root but here we are defining a root system so there are two types of root systems actually i beg your pardon here it was a typing error there are three types of root system as we are going to see so here we have a tap root system and a fibrous root system the other one that i forgot to include is actually an adventitious root system but we are going to see as well. so the tap root system this is a root system consisting of a main growing root from the radical of the embryo growing straightly downward while giving off numerous side roots known as lateral roots i told you the meaning of the word side in science is lateral this type of root system is found mainly in dicotyledonous plants you can see here this main root which you are seeing there is what we call the tap root but since it is not alone it has lateral branches or what we call the side branches so these side branches collectively a collection of all these ones with their arrangement is what we call a tap root system now we come to the fibrous root system this type of root system has no main root and all the roots develop from a common point near the base of the stem i have already talked about this uh, it is mostly occurs in monocotyledonous plants as we are going to see so this is uh, a drawing representing a grass a certain type of grass you can see that this point is a stem you know grasses these are leaves in grasses these these are not stems these are leaves but they have a very very small stem here around here where the leaves come from and where the roots begin so this these roots begin from a common point and if you look at them really they are almost all of them are of the same size they don't there is nothing like a main root so this type this kind of system is known as a fibrous root system adventitious root system these are plant roots that develop from non-root tissues for example they develop from the stem from leaves from branches etc 
So adventitious root systems, they are not actually roots, but you know, since they attach the plant in the soil, so for them they have no connection with the radical as we saw in the beginning. They have no connection with the what? The radical because they can develop from leaves, they can develop from stems, they can develop from nodes, anywhere. So they are not they don't have a root origin but since they can uh they begin as they can they may begin as stems but since at, at the end of the day they will fix the plant in the soil so we end up calling them that is a picture of adventitious roots as you can see here this is a stem this is a stem uh, which fell on the ground and when it fell on the ground uh, roots began to come from it you get it so and i'm sure you have seen this type of scenario uh so many times several times it's not a very new scenario to you uh whereby a stem falls down and it begins to produce roots so those roots that are produced from a non-root portion of the plant are called the ones that we call adventitious roots uh, so let's look at the functions of roots there are basically two functions of roots basically the basic ones the ones that uh, most roots really do one is to anchor the plant in the ground or to any other support for example it might be a wall it might be another plant but anchor to anchor something is like to fix something so that it doesn't fall eh? if we were say maybe if you were to anchor something you fix it so that it doesn't fall then another one is to absorb mineral salts and water for the nourishment of plants if you uproot a plant and you place it there it will begin to dry reason being it's no longer absorbing water from the soil so and what absorbs that water they are the roots that's why if you just cut a plant and you leave the roots inside the soil after several months you may find that actually that plant has been able to produce the shoot again but if you uproot that plant you may find that it may die completely except in rare instances where by if you place the 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 stem on the ground you might find that actually uh it as we have seen uh the, the stem may give rise to adventitious roots but that is only in a few types others will just die completely for us we are cattle keepers and the, we have a problem when you are clearing our land uh, we have this a lot of plants which disturb us and they compete with the pasture for cows so they end up we, we have to fight them uh, some to clear the land so that we can get enough pasture but the one of the methods that has proved effective in fighting these plants is uprooting them but if you just slash you are just joking other functions of course we have other functions play, uh, that are played by roots but these roots must be modified if there if a root is not doing okay every root must actually do this too but if it is doing any other then we call that root to we say that that root is actually modified so we look at modified roots to say the word modified is actually an english word and it simply it means to change to change some somehow to change or to improve actually the real meaning would be to improve something to modify to make it better eh? that's why that's what it basically means so in addition to acting as uh, anchorage to provide anchorage or to anchor plants in the ground or on other support materials and also apart from absorbing water and mineral salts from the ground some roots have been able to do some other functions for example storage uh, I'm sure if you are a student especially a student of Kampara High or any other Ugandan secondary school you have been able to eat fried cassava at school 
should I inform you my friend that cassava that you have been eating all along you are actually eating roots and if you're arguing that you've never eaten cassava at least you have eaten sweet potatoes because sweet potatoes for them they are at least sweet and if you are still arguing then you have eaten carrots yeah at least you have eaten carrots and the real uh, this carrot you know carrots actually they are of high class people if you are not uh, eating carrots uh, then you are a low class person but in addition to being a high class person carrots also improve your vision so at least at one point or another everyone has eaten carrots and uh, these carrots are actually roots so as you're eating carrots and you are enjoying them just know you are eating what roots so we so since uh, and why why is it like that so why is that we are able to eat these guys because they can store the food in the form of starch and sugar i want you to remember that this food actually comes from photosynthesis so as these plants cassava sweet potato and carrot as for them they are making their food during photosynthesis they have they enable their roots to work as their banks so they bank their starch and sugar remember for them their starch and sugar acts as money so they bank it there in the roots and as you know if you have money in your pocket the pockets will swell so in turn these guys these roots will swell uh, the more sugar and the more starch they contain the bigger the size so and the, the, the increase in size will make them to be modified there are others which are modified for breathing uh we have plants which we call the mangroves and uh, these plants grow in swamps mud you know mud filled with waterlogged soils and if you ever get soil and you put it in a beaker or a cup or in a container and you pour water there you'll find you'll see some air bubbles coming out so now imagine a swamp which has stayed there for years and years with, the, with that water which is not going away do you think that soil or that water contains any more air it doesn't so how will these roots breathe remember they are they have living cells they must breathe so how will they get the oxygen yet all the oxygen in the soil where they are has been eliminated by the water so they become modified they come out they grow vertically out of the mud and the water and they can now breathe real real air like the one you and i breathe so uh stilt roots the word stilt means support i don't know if you guys are good farmers but if you are a good farmer you have seen uh banana plantations usually when a banana bears the bunch uh, what happens that it may become heavy and it is likely to fall down so farmers will bring a certain form of support they are usually long sticks there that are dry so they will place it on this banana to support it and it will not fall down so those guys are called stilts so we have also roots which act as stilts and we call them stilty roots these develop from the main stem and provide extra support they are found in mangrove trees so i want you to see this mangrove trees have uh, breathing roots they also have stilty roots we have a picture there if you can see very well have a picture there are uh, these guys you see from where they are coming from up to here from here up to here very long and they are actually representing stilty roots we have what we call prop roots prop roots and stilt roots are almost the same the only difference is our prop roots are more on towards the base they are near the ground compared to stilty roots actually stilty roots some of them can even develop from branches but these guys for them they are near the ground so they are not very tall compared to stilty roots these are large thick roots from the base of the tree stroke stem 
Uh, there is a word covered there, but it seems the word is uh, they provide extra support. So you can look at it, look at the way by God, God can really create these guys. Look at the way they are shaped. They are designed in such a way that even wind can't really break them. And you find them in the trees which are really, really long. Something like 150 meters tall. Uh, they are actually found in trees which are very tall and trees which have stayed there for years. Uh, you find a tree has 1000 years. Uh, it is almost as old as Jesus. So these trees, what enables them to stay for all that long without falling down, it is because of these buttress roots. And as the tree continues to grow in size, even these buttress roots continue to grow in size. Clasping roots. Clasping roots. The word to clasp means to attach firmly or to grip something, eh? to grasp something. Eh? So clasping roots. These are roots that grow from nodes of climbing stems. Uh, examples are uh, we have orchids. Uh, this word which is covered here uh, is orchids. And orchids are these guys here. So maybe I can write for you the spelling of orchids. Uh, we, let's see it there. Uh, let me write it here. Orchids. Eh? Orchids. Okay, it's simple. So that's uh, the, that's it. But uh, so they are called the clasping roots. In addition to orchids, we have other plants we call uh, we call figs. I don't know if you guys know figs, but uh, if we get time to meet physically, I'll show you how a fig looks like. They're actually very big trees, but they always. Uh, you find them clinging around other plants and uh, at the end of the day you find that uh, the plant which was at first providing support uh, these fig trees actually destroy them and uh, at the end of the day for them they remain there when they have destroyed this plant which actually at, at first given them gave them epiphytic roots these ones are similar to uh, clasping roots uh, now, epiphytic, maybe I would like to elaborate on the word epiphytic. Epi means over or on top of something. Then phytic means plant, something which is has a relation to plants. So epiphytic, that means on, on top of the plant. Eh? So on top of planty roots, that's what actually this word means. So you find that actually there's no much difference between epiphytic roots and the clasping roots.